Welcome to the Real Mama Pod. I'm your host, Devin. And I'm your host, Kendra. We are real moms. Sharing real experiences. The The things things people people don't don't tell you. Hey, mama, hey. Hey, mama, hey. How you doing, friend? I'm good. How are you? I'm super fantastic. Oh, well, if this is your first (laughs) time listening, I'm Kendra. And I'm your host, Devin. Welcome. Welcome Welcome to to the Real Mama Mama Pod. So, um, listeners, visuals, whoever... (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, we are we've relaunched. We've relaunched. Mm-hmm. The Real Mama Pod is in season three. Yep. Ow. And if you've been following us for hmm, the two years that mm-hmm. we've been active, almost two years, we have talked about becoming a part of a network. That mm-hmm. was a dream of ours when mm-hmm. we first started this podcast. Yeah. And we're here. Yeah, we're here, y'all. We are here. Who we with? <laughs> Who, Who we, we with? with? Who we with? Who you with? Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we are now powered by Something Extraordinary Media Group. Mm-hmm. We are a part of SC Network. Mm-hmm. Can you believe it's that? It's an amazing feeling. It is. It like is we're still feeling. getting used to this life. It mm-hmm. is completely foreign to us. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone who's a part of this media group has made us feel so comfortable. Yeah. Uh, and we've made the right choice. We like have. we have really like. Like, we, really, like... We stepped up our game, baby. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to our network. Yes. S-E Network. Something yeah. extraordinary because that's what they are and that's what we are. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Come on. Somebody would like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, if this is your first time listening or if you've been here for a while, we're changing some things up a bit. So, we're going to open up with the review. With that, that means you have to leave them. Okay. Yes. So we are trying to, we, I mean, we stepped up by aesthetics. Okay. Mm-hmm. The content has always been there, but now we want to be a household name. So mm-hmm. we're asking you to share an episode with your favorite friend, family mm-hmm. member, auntie, uncle. It don't matter. You know, we got a little something for everybody yes. and to write us a review. So we have a review from Crystal Darcel and it's titled Diverse Topics, lovely show. Oh, thanks. Shout we, out to Crystal. We, yeah, because she, we know Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> she be right in Mama's Corner. She be, she be looking out. She be doing all the things. That love it. Yes. Yes. She's um, so it says, great show, and I love the topics. Thus far, the autism episode was my favorite. Thanks for bringing everyone to the table with diverse topics. I look forward to growing with this podcast. Thank you, Come Crystal. On. Thank you, Crystal. We love you. We do. We love we you. We love Crystal. So... Um, if you've been here for a while, this is your first time listening. Usually we are guest heavy. So we Mm -hmm. bring in experts to talk about different diverse topics like Mm -hmm. Crystal mentioned. Um, and it's a variety of topics. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's sometimes it's hard to get together where it's just Ken and I, Mm -hmm. and what we want to do and be intentional about this year is to get, allow people to really get to know us. Yes. Right. Because it's hard when you have guests to really get to know us as individuals, Mm -hmm. especially if you don't know us. If you're a new listener, you just stumble upon our podcast. You don't really know who Kendra and Devin is. Right. You know, we're moms. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. But the core. Right. The core of us. So we want to be a little bit more intentional this season. And yes, still bring guests because we're no experts in a lot of things. But also let y'all see a different side of us where you can kind of dig a little deeper and get to know us. Mm -hmm. Um, So this one is really uh, talking about like our relationships with our husbands, with our kids and Mm-hmm. You know, how have we been with the lowest of lows with our husbands and the highs <laughs> yes. of highs, okay? And so I think it's really important to talk about this because mm-hmm. a lot of times people are like, couples goals, but they don't really know what it took to be that. Yeah. And if you know the ends is out, we may not be your couple goal. Exactly. I'd be like, shit. <laughs> right. I I'm it. not the goal right no. now. Uh-uh. <laughs> Never um, mind next. Right. Next goal. And I really think with this climate and social media with especially like the the cheesecake thing that went around when the, the guy tried to take the girl on the cheesecake the factory cheesecake date factory like date. the the these these standards yeah these let's talk standards, about it let's talk I, about I think it. from a perspective of being in long-term relationships because we've been with our 
husbands for a while. Mm -hmm. Jared and I, I think, are 16 years now and married for nine. And Mm -hmm. you and Jonathan together, 10, married for six. We've been married, damn it. Six years, right? (laughs) Six years. Okay, six. But we've been together for going on 11 years. 11 years. So it's just like, we got some skin in the game. And not that we're trying to tell you what to do, but I think we need to start changing these perspectives because we do. You ain't getting flued out at 21. Because I mean, you could maybe depend on, but if you're looking for a quality, relationship and stuff like that if you're chasing a dollar cool like i ain't mad at you sis right but if you trying to really be committed to someone like, like we gotta be chasing dollars yeah, together. together we have to I'm grow together i'm not depending on no mm-hmm. man mm-hmm. or nobody period right. to chase dollars for me right like we gonna chase dollars together yeah so like we it's equal playing field yeah i didn't like cheesecake factory at I would win. young 20 something kids let's slide but even like, as a, if if I'm not single, but if I was a 30 year old woman and a man decided to take me out a date or we agreed on a date and mm-hmm. he said Cheesecake Factory, I would have went. Yes. At 30 something. Like, seriously. I don't see the problem. And you know what's interesting is that, you know, granted, we are not young 30 something year old. Mm-hmm. Well, we are young. We are young 30 something year old women. But we're not young 30 something single women. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure it looks a lot different now. Yeah. Um, but. I, if it was me, mm-hmm. you know, single out here, and he's like, hey, let's go to the Cheesecake Factory. Okay, that might be his favorite restaurant. Right. Right? Or, like, you just never know what the intention was behind that. Or he may think, like, this is the, the hot spot. Right. I don't know. I right. don't know. That that was an interesting conversation, though, on social media. And then her approach, like, you were late to the date. You're talking about how fine you were, and you were just okay. Um, <laughs> but, but, sorry, girl. You shouldn't have been acting like that. You wrong for that. <laughs> um, and I don't know if it was staged or not, but it could have been because that yeah, happens on social media. A lot. They be coming up with these scenarios, yeah, telling these stories, and you be drawn in, and it's like, wait, was that real? Yeah, because that just sounds a little bit. Too but there awkward. were people in the comments that were agreeing with her, so that's why I feel like, even if it was staged, we still need to have this conversation. Absolutely. And so, um, let's talk about it. Marriage is a sacrifice. It is. Um. And a lot of people want marriage because they think of the wedding. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't like your spouse. Mm -hmm. You love them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to kill them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. (laughs) Not all the time. But sometimes. You never wanted to kill Jonathan? Um, Kill? Severely hurt, baby. (laughs) <laughs> like kill him and bring him back, not oh, yeah. final. Yeah, like a resurrection. <laughs> yeah, like, like I don't need to. Ki- I don't need you to kill that version of yourself. Right, exactly. And I'm gonna need you to resurrect. Not for real, for real. Not and final. Two, I know no. what you meant. For. I know yeah. you wouldn't hurt a fly. Yeah, oh, maybe you need to. Right, you mess with my babies. <laughs> um, but yeah, what are some sacrifices you've made for your marriage? Oh, baby. Um, one, the first sac. I this is fresh into our marriage mm-hmm. too. Um, me and Jonathan got married in May of 2017 mm-hmm. and in August of 2016, he got accepted into graduate school in mm-hmm. Missouri. I told Jonathan that I was not moving to Missouri mm-hmm. unless we were married, mm-hmm. not engaged, mm-hmm. but married. Mm-hmm. Now that wasn't like a pressure you like, you need to hurry up and it wasn't anything like that at mm-hmm. all. It's just, we were living here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were living together. Um, I knew he had this dream of wanting to uh, go to graduate school and get his doctor and all that. Completely supported that, right? Uh, but when I learned he was applying to Missouri, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, you got to go where the, the program is. Right. Uh, when he got accepted, I was like, that is great. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for you, and I'm going to support you. And I'm not moving to Missouri <laughs> unless, we're you married. know, we're married. Yeah. And, again, that wasn't like a... You know, rush, you need to right. hurry up and propose to me situation, but I just wanted that to be clear. Yeah. Because one, Missouri, you know, shout out to the Missouri followers and listeners <laughs> and things, but it just wasn't my vibe. Yeah. I lived in Missouri as a kid and I did not like mm-hmm. it. Um, but, you know, we got married in 2017 and a couple months after our wedding, I moved to Missouri. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was a sacrifice yeah. because I was working in a space that I loved, mm-hmm. a job that I loved, serving communities that I loved, mm-hmm. and I had to leave what I loved to follow my husband's dreams. Mm-hmm. But one thing Kendra going to do is make lemonade out of lemons. Mm-hmm. Like, moving to Missouri was a lemon for me. Right. Like, I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. But I found a way to make it beneficial for not only Jonathan mm-hmm. and supporting him, but, like, what can I do 
to support me and what I want to do long term. Right. So I ended up going back to school too. Mm-hmm. Um, which got your third degree. Me, I got my third degree. Um, and I'm very thankful for my time in Missouri. You mm-hmm. know, I had Eli while I was there. Yeah. And honestly, the type of birthing experience I had with him, mm-hmm. I could not imagine doing that here now. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was chaotic. And we lived around the corner from the Women's and Children's Hospital. Mm-hmm. And it was just a great experience in that regard. Right. So, I'm glad you got that. Yeah. Me, thank you. Um, but I, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, but the move to Missouri was a sacrifice because I didn't want to do that. And I left a job that I loved. Mm-hmm. Now, the way God works, right, mm. is he, he equipped me with everything that I needed to to gain from my experience in Missouri, the degree that I had, the research that I had done, my thesis was around the work that I'm doing now, and I'm back in the job that I was in before, mm-hmm. but in a completely different position mm-hmm. and doing like furthering, like, mm-hmm. or I furthered my skills into something great. So it's just, it's crazy how that became full circle. So that sacrifice turned into a major blessing for me yeah, and us as a family. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all know I'm a military spouse, so I sacrifice pretty much yes. everything. Um, it's a huge sacrifice being a military spouse. I mean, being in the military in general, that's a huge sacrifice. But when you talk about career and all these other things, we I have to take out different retirement plans because I'm nowhere for a long period of time to benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I didn't see myself as a military spouse. And honestly, Jared proposed and then told me he was joining the military. And I told him the engagement was off. Like, I called it. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I didn't sign up for this. I don't see my life being like this. I'm supposed to be in a city. I'm a city girl. Not a city, city girl. But, like, I like to be in a city. Like not in the middle of nowhere. Like city girl. Not in the middle of the Mojave Desert. That's not what I envisioned for my life. Um, <laughs> but we ended up working it out. And, um... Honestly, um, you know how sometimes you have visions? Mm-hmm. Like, I've always envisioned Jared in the military. He comes from a military family. You envisioned him? I military? envisioned that. I don't know how, I don't know if I dreamt it. I don't know what, but I just felt like in my blood, like what he was doing in the architecture world wasn't like what he wanted to do, uh-huh. especially when he got laid off, because he hit a low when he got laid off. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, this, he about to join the military. So and he did. It. I felt it. I just felt it in my blood. Like, because mm-hmm. his brother is high up in the military. His dad was high up in the military. And I just knew it was, it was mm-hmm. somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a huge sacrifice. Our kids have to move every two years, trying to find them a new school, trying to get acclimated. Mm-hmm. And even as his role as an officer, mm-hmm. I have to be a certain way as yes. well. So, Because everything is very political. So the reflection of me and the kids and all that, like, it's just you have it's to a hot mess. About his career yeah, I have to think about his career, that everything that I do. Mm-hmm. Even planning our schedules to record, I have to be strategic about around his schedule. Everything revolves around him. And even topics that we talk topics, about. Topics, everything. Mm-hmm. So I have to just always be aware mm-hmm. because of that. Um, that but, I, but I can say this. At the end of the day, I'm still myself. Yeah. I'm not changing for nobody. I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. So I'm still myself. But, you know, just code switch a little bit, I guess. Yeah. I mean, being a military brat myself yeah there are huge sacrifices that you may not understand that drew and jay may go through mm-hmm. yeah and it, it is a lot to move around every three years yeah. make new friends yeah. get accustomed to new cultures yeah. new teachers yeah. new school dynamics new environments it is a lot it's very taxing on yeah. kids new doctors um, but one thing that will come out of them is they will be able to maneuver anywhere in the world mm-hmm. you can drop them Anywhere in the world, and they're going to figure it out. Yeah. So that is one benefit yeah. um, that could come out of their experience of being a military yeah. kid. Yeah. So we are repping FAMU today. Yeah. And we both always. met our, always, or as much as we can, with clothing. <laughs> um, but we met our husbands at FAMU. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like, I don't know, what what is it about FAMU love? It just hit different. It hit different? It does. The weddings be lit. The, at, for, let me say. Let Ain't me, nothing like let a family wedding. Let me just wedding. tell y'all this. Ain't nothing like a fam you wedding. Mm-hmm. One, the bar gonna be open. Yeah. The bar is gonna be open. Yeah, the DJ. Or at least the family weddings I've been to. Yeah. I can't speak for yeah. everybody's family wedding. 
but the weddings that I have been to, the bar has been open, the wedding has been lit. Yeah, the DJs. The DJ. It's nothing like a family DJ. You got a family wedding, you know you have a family DJ, and it's going to take you back to like just the family experience. Yes. But my family, because you know, I'm from New York, so my New York family is like, what is going on? What are y'all doing? What are you talking about? Pull out the stick. Like, are y'all about to shoot? Like, should I be ducking? Like, they were so confused, so that was funny. Because that, hell, I was confused yeah. when I got to family. They was like, what are you doing? Who are you? Right. Be- let me just say this about <laughs> family i'm and this is a little off topic but when you when you step foot on that campus if you did not grow up mm-hmm. in florida mm-hmm. or even south florida yeah. because let, let's be clear it's a heavy FAMU is in tallahassee it's in the panhandle but it is heavy 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 there's heavy south florida influence mm-hmm. if and there they say florida's like three states low yeah. key you got your panhandle which they call south alabama or south georgia <laughs> whatever then you got central florida mm-hmm. which is country and it has its own orlando central and all this it's just country oh baby gainesville is that's country. central florida yes oh i didn't know that south florida is islands all kinds of it's like a melting pot down there mm-hmm. but they have their own culture and pull out the stick i ain't mm-hmm. never heard of no sticks being pulled out yeah. until i got the family yeah that's true i was like what <laughs> like, is a stick right, like a what, stick what stick y'all talking <laughs> yeah about? right so yes yeah. but I, I can see why your family was like the hell is this yeah. because but you gotta just be there they was they was there. like like okay because <laughs> like, we got our own dances yeah. in new york and that ain't, that yeah. ain't it uh, uh yes to your so, question yeah okay well i do have another question as far as being a supportive spouse so both of our husbands have been there we provide a safe space for them most of the time Mm -hmm. sometimes they beg to differ but we really try to be intentional and they were very open on our podcast um especially jonathan opening up about being depressed and Mm -hmm. jerry has opened up to me about being depressed as well he didn't say it on the podcast but he neither one of them realized they were depressed until like after the fact Mm -hmm. hearing that as a spouse, like, how did that make you feel? Did you have, did you feel like you had some ownership within that and how he was feeling? Mm-hmm. Did you feel like you should have done more or you just like, you know, that's how he's feeling. Mm-hmm. How did you navigate that? Yeah, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. So I did not know Jonathan was depressed until after, well, after. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of that depression came from all the transitions that we had. Mm-hmm. Like we had moved from Missouri um, Eli was still an infant. Mm-hmm. We were, it was COVID. Yeah. It was, uh, me finding a job. Yeah. It was him completing his internship, him studying and preparing to sit for his licensure. There were so many things going on, mm-hmm. uh, that I was also, you know, having to deal with, but we handle things differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and what really, really, really had an impact on him and, and the depression was just, setting himself up career wise Mm -hmm. like you know some men like if their their careers jobs traits what have you are not in line Mm -hmm. it really takes a toll especially if they have a family yeah um and him having to sit for that license Mm -hmm. was a process it was so it was hard he had to do a lot of preparation the first exam he took he failed it Mm -hmm. and you you have to wait three months you gotta pay extra money like Mm -hmm. they're not cheap to take we were already broke Mm -hmm. so it's like all of that had an impact Mm -hmm. on him and i didn't realize just how uh, much it affected him yeah now he was he always his happy well jonathan's very kind of chill, chill anyways yeah. but he wasn't like i saw things I'm like mm-hmm. oh, something's not right yeah. like are you okay and i mm-hmm. would ask him that but i really didn't know to to the extent yeah and sometimes i'd be on his neck about why you ain't clean up right. after yourself why you ain't pick this jacket up and hang right. it up in the closet why are your drawers on the floor like right. stuff like i'm mm-hmm. like dang i could have given him a little more grace right but at the same time you gotta let me know what's going right. on so it's like i I didn't know, but when he told me, I'm like, okay. Makes sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I could have been more, I could have dug a little deeper. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah, you're not yourself, but is there anything else going on? Like, mm-hmm. what? And I didn't. Yeah. Um, but, you know, now that I know some of his triggers, mm-hmm. um, and I understood where he was mentally, emotionally, mm-hmm. physically at that time, mm-hmm. I am more aware of like, okay, if something's really yeah. not going on. And he, I also made it known to him like, hey, but you got to let me know what's going on. Yeah. You got to let me in. Mm-hmm. There's only so much I can do. Yeah. Um, you got to say, hey, I, I got some things going on. Right. I'll talk about it when I'm comfortable. Cool. Yeah. But you got to yeah, let me know. Yeah. Too. What about you? Yeah. I think for me, um, for some reason, because you know, I... 
I empathize a lot and I take on other people's problems and Mm -hmm. I'm trying to not do that, but that's just been me my whole life. So if somebody else is hurting, I feel responsible. Mm -hmm. Even though it don't have nothing to do with me, I'm still like, oh no, how can I fix it? How can I make it? So when Jared told me that, I felt like it was my fault. Mm -hmm. Like, what did I do? And it's just like, I didn't do anything. Essentially, I didn't do anything. It's just that's where you are and how you're processing information and how you feeling about things and, Mm -hmm. you know, us moving around and not having a lot of help, having newborns, having kids just in general, it can put a toll on you, your marriage. And not that you don't love your spouse or your kids. It's just hard when you don't have the resources and lack of sleep and y'all bickering about the dumbest shit. But it's like a big thing at that time. When Mm -hmm. you look back, you say, oh, that was stupid. But it's just like, when you don't have sleep, you're just not processing you're not things. You're not yourself. You're not yourself. Like, I remember getting an argument with Jerry because he called me fussy. And I was like, you have some nerve to call me fussy. <laughs> like, fussing at him. And so, right, exactly. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, I I took ownership of that. But then I'm like, okay, how can we help you? Mm-hmm. You know, like, what what? how can we help you not feel like this or get the help that you need or the resources and things like that? Mm-hmm. So we went to, like, uh, couples therapy a little bit. And that was eye-opening for me mm-hmm. because that lady was, she was like, the route y'all are going on, y'all may be getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. And for me, I was just like... She told me that? She told me that. But we both needed to hear that. Uh-huh. And a lot of people are like... I would have been so offended by that. And I was like, no, because that changed our marriage. Mm -hmm. Because we really was like, we don't want that. But we need to work on X, Y, Z to not have that. Mm -hmm. And so, because divorce is final. And uh, as much shit as I talk about Jerry, I couldn't imagine my life without him. Exactly. that, That is my person. Yeah. And so, I was like, okay, I need to fix this about me. We need to fix this about you. And then we come together. Mm -hmm. And so, um... I mean, we haven't been back to therapy since because it's just a lot of stuff. No, a lot of But, like, parts. yeah, we took that with us. And we both know, like, we're in this until death do us And maybe part. that's all y'all needed to hear. We needed to hear that. It was a good, it was a slap in the face and a gut punch. Mm-hmm. But it changed my perspective. Right. And it's like, I don't, I married you because I want to spend the rest of my right. life with you. And as you, while you, I know we're talking about marriage, Mm -hmm. but you're not always going to be the same person you were when you got married. Yeah. I'm not the same Kendra I was in 2017. Mm -hmm. So as life progresses, as things, as things happen, Mm -hmm. like you become a different version of yourself. Yeah. When you got married, you're not the same 2014, Mm -hmm. Devin. No. Y'all didn't had kids. Yeah. Y'all didn't got switched careers. Mm -hmm. Well, Jared has switched careers. Mm -hmm. Y'all have moved around different. Like there are so many things that impact the way or who you are as a person. So it's like we got to grow together. Yeah, we have to go together. So you can't, you know, that that takes it's a special skill to really adapt to the new yeah. version of yourself and right. your partner. Yeah. And just learn to be selfish when it comes to us dating each other. Yeah. And p- putting ourselves first. Mm-hmm. So just even if it's starting watching a TV show together, even if it's for 30 minutes, if it's a two hour thing. We'll be like, okay, we do 30 minutes, then we go to bed. Yeah. Just really being, because then they give us something to talk about. When you be together for so long, yeah. like, sometimes it's hard to, like, find things to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, like, now we have a conversation over a show, what we think may happen, or th- mm-hmm. just ways to bond. Yeah. And now that the kids are sleeping better, sleeping through the night, I think we're in a but- much Sleep better, really happier place. Impact. Yeah. And like you said, there's nothing like family love. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just, it's like when you find your person, Mm -hmm. and it's like, this is who I'm supposed to be with. And that fam you love is just, it's just different. Like, this is your person. Y'all gonna move about the world the same way because you were raised Mm -hmm. at Florida University. Right? Yeah. So, it's just just just, hit different. You can conquer the world, seriously. Together. There's nothing like Riley Love. Riley's gonna conquer the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For sure. Sure. Okay. Well, that was a good little little chit chat. Yeah, thank you, Fran, for keeping us. You know. Yeah, honest. I think people need to hear that though, because they see us on social media. Oh, yeah. And think we have it all together. We don't. No, because somebody sure said that to me before. Sure. One of my friends at, at, in Georgia on base, she was like, "You?" Because I was like, "Yeah, me and Jerry got an argument or something." She was like, "Y'all argue." It's like, yes, yeah, we argue. argue. <laughs> we, you, if we didn't argue, my daddy used to say, yeah, yeah, yeah somebody lying. <laughs> somebody lying. You know, somebody yeah. lying. So, so, yes, we do not have it household. all together. Very we, honest household. We, you know, it's not, it's better now, but we, we have disagreements. Of course, you should. Yeah. You should have disagreements yeah. because you can't correct 
issues if you don't make them known. Like, yeah. I don't agree with that. Mm-hmm. How can we work together to fix this? Okay. I don't know. All right. So, Mama's Juice. We'll be drinking. We're drinking a good old classic mimosa today. Okay. I like that. Just some girl talk, mm-hmm. you know. We like to have our girl talk over mimosas. Yeah. So, that's it. I like that. We got that. some champagne and some OJ, and we got a classic mimosa. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. That's what we're sipping on today. It's time for Mama's Corner, my favorite segment. And so if this is your first time listening to the podcast, Mama's Corner is our opportunity to connect with our listeners and our guests further. We don't have a guest today. And sometimes we're reflective during Mama's Corner. Our listeners mm-hmm. typically uh, write in and ask us advice. And mm-hmm. based on our experiences, we give them advice. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's good advice, keep it. If it's not, we ain't say nothing. <laughs> um, if you're interested in writing to Mama's Corner, you can email us at mama at the realmamapod.com. And I'll I check those emails all the time. Mm-hmm. So just like I'm checking these reviews now, I'm checking the emails. <laughs> uh, so feel free to write us if you have a question. Um, so for Mama's Corner, I thought it could be fun and witty since we're talking about family and our husbands and things like this, mm-hmm. things like that. So um, our kids, they say some funny things. Yes, they, do. they are hilarious. Yes. So I thought maybe we can give some examples of some things that our kids have said. Okay. Recently, in the past, whatever. So. <laughs> What you got? What what Eli be saying over there? Um, Eli is just a funny kid. Period. Mm-hmm. Like he's silly. Yeah. He's like he doesn't always say funny things, but mm-hmm. he does a lot of funny shit. Yeah. Um, today even when we left the house, like he stamped me and Devin with oh, y'all yeah. might see little dinosaurs on us. Yep. He was like, um, like you know, pretty much where y'all going? I'm yeah. like, oh, we're going to film the mom, the Mama Pie podcast, and he was like, because this is day two. He's like, again? <laughs> and we were like, yeah, again. Now, Eli's only four. And so he got his little dinosaur stickers, and he put one on his Gaga. He calls mm-hmm. Devin Gaga. And he put one on me. And we were like, okay, so I guess we stamped with dinosaurs today. So <laughs> we a dinosaur wear. egg on my sweatshirt. Yep. That, that's that's why, I, yeah. And Devin is ty- Tyrannosaurus Yeah, Rex just like today. he made sure to give me a T-Rex because he was wearing a T-Rex. And he said, yes. you have a T-Rex like me. So. Yes, that's his favorite dinosaur. Yeah. But that's one funny thing. And then um, uh, for the new year, I always mm-hmm. cook like traditional new yeah. year meal, southern soul mm-hmm. food, black eyed peas, collard greens situation. So uh, this year I decided to make some dressing because we didn't do like a traditional Christmas meal. So I yeah. wanted some dressing. So I said, Eli, you want to come help mommy make dressing? Because I'm trying to get him to try different foods. So I'm like, maybe if he makes it with me, that'll mm-hmm. help him try it. So he was like, yeah. So he came over. And it got to the point where he was just standing there watching me. Like, he wasn't even helping. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, bro, like, what you doing? Here? Right. <laughs> so he was standing in front of the dressing on a step stool, and I was mixing it in, and I had food everywhere. Like, mm-hmm. It was just, the, the counter around the dressing was just a mess. Right. It was just hot. It, stuff, stuff was just flying everywhere. So I said, dang, we made a mess. He said, no, you made a mess. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? He said, no, you made a mess. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So me and John, it was funny. Right. He was like, nah, bro, you ain't putting that on me. Right. You made a mess. That's so hilarious. That hilarious. Eli I funny. can't wait to hear what Drew and Jay said because I know they so, are just. So if anybody knows, my husband, Jared Grace, his whole family, the Graces, they are just funny people. They it, are. That, grandfather all the way down to Jared. It's just a Grace gene. It's just hilarious. I just sit there and laugh. Uh, rest uh, his soul, Jared's grandfather. But he was hilarious. Um, so my boys have that gene as well. And so one, I'll do one of each. So Jay is my youngest. He's three. Jay, we driving in the car. We're almost home. He drops his toy and Jay wants me to stop and pick up his toy. And if we were far from home, I would have done that. But we were so close to home. I mean, like one minute. Right. So he's like, mommy, pick up my toy, pick up my toy. And I'm like, Jay, I'm not picking up your toy. We're almost home. Be patient. We're working on patience. And he was like, you know what, mommy? You know what? Do you know what you are? And I was like, oh, well, I think he's about to call me a bitch. So I'm like, no, Jay, what am I? It's like, you are a Decepticon. And I was like, a Decepticon? Like, that's the best you got? So I'm like, oh, a Decepticon. Okay. And for those who don't know, a Decepticon is a Transformer, the villain. Okay, so I he was a Decepticon. Up called you a villain. A villain. I was a Decepticon. So well, you tried me. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? You are a Decepticon. Yes, and he said it with so much 
passion and hurt. Like he was just about to hurt my feelings. I had to bite down on my cheek so I won't bust out laughing. I would have laughed. In his face. I would have laughed. I'm sorry. So yeah, I'm a Decepticon. Um, and it would be funny if we could pull up a Decepticon and like put that there so people can see what that is. But hilarious. And then uh, the second oh. one, Drew. Okay, so we're working on potty training. They've been sleeping through the night, not peeing on themselves. Praise the Lord. And so we cut them off at 6 p.m. Like you cannot. The kitchen is closed. So before bed, Drew was like, "Hey, mom." He whispers it because if Jerry hears her, he already know he gonna get shut down. So he whispers, "Hey, mom, um, I need some water." My, he know he goes, "My throat, my throat is dry." I was like, "Okay, Drew, well, you can't have anything to drink." He's like, "Well, I can't swallow my spit." I said, "Well, you can't get any water." And he was like, "But I'm thirsty." I was like, "Okay, well, I'll give you a cap full of water." He was like, "That's not gonna handle it." <laughs> For those of y'all who don't, Drew is very dramatic, like, animated. And yes, so and, I can see him. Say and he's that. just like, that's, "That's not gonna handle it." And I said, like, "Well, I don't know what's gonna handle it, but you're not getting anything outside of capful." And he just fell asleep. It didn't handle it. It didn't handle I, it. it. But what is a capful gonna do? I don't wet your tongue. I don't know, but you're not about to be peeing in this bed. We ain't we even done with that. To his throat, I'm the, sorry. His well, then you need to learn how to wake up and go to the bathroom. When you do that stuff, you can have something to drink. But he's not doing that. This is it. No. <laughs> you can wash the sheets then. You know what? I can't even sit here and say that because Eli be like, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. <laughs> no. Sorry. You knew your time but to have something to drink. But if he asked for a sip no. of water, no. I'll give him a sip no. of water. Mm-mm. I'm surprised because usually you can't I know, in. but I'm tired of the pissy beds. <laughs> That's fair. It's okay. So. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> when Jonathan go upstairs and hit me with a. Babe, I already know. Damn it, yeah. we got to change the sheets. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Well, I mean, I think that concludes our episode for it today. Does. You got anything to add? I don't. I think that was a cool, fun episode. Yeah. Got a... Shout out to the fam you love. Yeah. And the husbands. Yeah. Supportive or whatever. All right. Until next time. Bye. Bye.